All right, sit down. I tell you, when you come out here, people might think it's your father. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> you look like your father, it's true. And your father was Mr. Salai, and uh, he has held several posts in Cameroon. But we'll be talking about your father later. Let's start by talking about you. Okay? Okay. Who are you? I know people know your name already. I always say you are a comfortable hair because you were born with a golden spoon in your mouth. You were born in a rich home, am I right? <clears throat> it's, uh, it's hard for me to put it that way, but I defer to you on that. <laughs> okay. Um, what, what was life like when you were growing up? Well, life was... Uh, it was very family-like because I had a, a father who, um, who loved us very much, myself and my five sisters. I also had a mom who took very good care of us. Um, so we grew up all together. We grew up to love each other, respect each other, dine together, mm -hmm. go to school together, play together. So it was a, a very homogeneous close family growing up. And your father is from the Northwest province, uh, Jakiri, or what we'll call uh, Mantuma Kifum, in Jakiri subdivision in So. But he came right all the way from those hills to get married to a Corbison girl. Your mother is from the center province. This mixed culture at home, did it affect you guys? Did you see any, because most people say when there's cultural, you have this metissage, it's, it's difficult. No, I actually think it uh, it sort of broadened our experience growing up because we had the uh, the francophone side of our family, yes, which we got intertwined with. Spoke made us also speak a good French, and we got to discover the the francophone of the Betty culture, where mm -hmm. my mom is from. You know, Betty dishes like zanga, zom, mm -hmm. and uh, that, and also also got to discover the Northwest culture, in particular the culture from. Mbui Division mm -hmm. or Mantum, Mantum Kifum, which is our village. Mm -hmm. So I think it, if anything, it made us more all-rounded, more encompassing of what happens in both sides of the, the country. So it was actually a very good thing, I think. Yes, you went to primary school in Germany. Uh, what were you born to start with? Yaoundé. You were born in Yaoundé. And because your father held this uh, ambassador post a lot, you went to school in Germany, then you came back to Cameroon, you went to St. Joseph in Vogada, Yaoundé. <laughs> You later went uh, to secondary school in Sipisi Bali, okay, and high school in Kas Bambali, and you said something interesting came up there. Man, I did two years in high school, but you're telling me you did just one. Yeah, <clears throat> in fact, um, I did just the second and the third term at Kas in Bambali and took the advanced level as an external student and was... Uh, let's say fortunate enough to pass it good yeah. that that makes you a bright student were you bright can you say you're a bright person you're an intelligent mm. person i would say going by my educational record very probably okay yeah. <laughs> i like that you're so <laughs> humble then you went to the u.s where you attended the uh, suffolk university and you had an undergraduate degree and then you later on went to study law that's a two-year program and you tell me, still then, you did, you made a difference because you went there as a teenager where people go there as adults and with beard all over their faces. <laughs> but you went there as a teenager. Tell me about that. <clears throat> yes. Um, being a legal scholar in the U.S., you first need to have a first degree, either a B.A. or a B.S. So because I sort of, I would say, sped through my undergraduate program, I uh, completed the four-year degree program in less than two years, okay. which I did by taking maybe two times the number of courses which were required. So I entered law school at the rather tender age of 19, um, which I was told by the dean they never seen a teenager get into law school. Um, and uh, yeah, most of my classmates Usually in the U.S., when before you go to law school, you have a certain degree of work experience mm -hmm. and a certain age, usually in the mid-20s to up to early 30s. So I was, was very young. 
when I entered law school. Yes, and you left there with a law degree, and you came back and got admitted into the Cameroon uh, Bar Association. Yes, I did. Before being admitted into the Cameroon Bar Association, I got admitted into the California Bar Association. Mm -hmm. I practiced for two years, then okay. I came back to Cameroon, got admitted here, and did some work here also. Why do you have this thing to always come back home? We'll be coming back to that. Because okay. it seems as if this fufu in, 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 in Cameroon, or this cock that you're eating, or this and jama, boom, jama. and this jama jama, it seems as if it's getting into your head. You made it in the States, because when you, you, you can practice as a lawyer in the States where there is big money. I don't know what will bring you back here, where to even pay lawyer fee. You don't pass people law. People are, <laughs> they bring you cases, they bring you trouble, but they don't even have the money to pay. <laughs> Danche is laughing there. Okay, uh, tell me, I want to know about, more about your father. You come from a wonderful background. Your father went through, he went through this career. He was always being upgraded from one place to other. Can you just rush through your father's career for me? Yes. Um, he came from very humble, from a very humble family. Mm. Got educated by his, his uncle, who was a, a, a pastor in the village. Went to CPC Valley Secondary School. And uh, for his university education, mm -hmm. He was at Yaoundé One, where he was president of the Student Unions Association. Then he went to Eric okay. to study diplomacy. Mm -hmm. uh, he started off his political career as a chargé de mission at the prime minister's office, where he worked closely with our current I'm president. I'm not going to cut you short, but for some people who might not know who we're talking about, did you bring what I asked? A picture. <laughs> a picture of your dad. In electronic format, if you would permit. <laughs> Gosh, electronic. We'll get to maybe we'll, fi we'll find out out when I meet my artist there. You will okay. you, you get to, to, to show us. So tell me, go ahead with your father's career. So after working as a chargé de mission at the prime minister's office with our current president, His Excellency Paul Beer, he was transferred to Germany where he worked in the embassy as the first counselor. He worked there for a couple of years, then he got appointed minister at the presidency of the republic specifically the rank of uh, assistant secretary general at the presidency he worked there for a couple of years and his next assignment was ambassador mm -hmm. to the central african republic there he spent about a decade and a half mm -hmm. before returning to cameroon as minister of transport okay. um his final assignment before his untimely passing away was uh, he was the board chairman at the Cameroon Ports Authority. Okay. When you talk, uh, you hesitated when you were about to say his untimely death. People, some um, very, some people will have, because they said no news is bad news. It might sound very strange to you, but I know kids who will keep some amount of joy knowing that I'm the only son, I'm the heir, I'm going to get his cars, his money, his house. What did you think when he died? The worst feeling in my life, and I think if I survived his passing away, then there's no other emotional trauma that I can withstand. To me, my father was first this person who I loved so much and who loved not just me, his, his only son so much, but all of his kids, mm -hmm. all of his village, his country. And any other thought of whatever else was attached to him, whatever political power he had, whatever possessions, never, ever, ever comes into consideration. You can never wind back the clock, but to me, if you give my dad back bare bones, that's all I need and nothing else. That's nice of you. It's very sweet. I think where your father is, he's smiling and saying, that's my boy. Tell me, has your father, your, your father had a lot of power? Did it influence your life in any way? Because I want to know if it, you, you had some special favors from people, from school, from when you were 